The Atlantic's first storm occurred in early May, Tropical Storm Anna, and Anna in, in particular seems to have a habit of forming early. You remember in 2003 when it formed in April? This one formed subtropical at first, then became tropical and made landfall in the Carolinas before moving towards the northeast and becoming a tropical depression moving out towards uh, the sea. Here you can see its progression on satellite imagery and particularly around here you can see its transition to tropical storm and it only just held on to its thunderstorms uh, before making its landfall and then moved off towards the northeast there. Its peak wind speed was 60 miles an hour, its pressure was 998 millibars. Damage was reported to be minimal though there was one fatality as a result of the storm. Now we move on to Tropical Storm Bill which formed in mid-June and reached a peak wind speed of 60 miles an hour before making landfall in Texas and then weakening over land but still persisting until June 21st when it was approaching the east coast. Um, it had a peak wind speed as I said of 60 miles an hour, its pressure was 997 millibars. Here's its progression on satellite imagery as it traversed the gulf and then really got itself organised as it approached Texas there. Um, it did cause um, over 15 million dollars of damages and did also cause nine fatalities mainly due to flooding and landslides that occurred in the region. Here it is moving inland and how it progressed then on. Uh, it's, it didn't look too bad after it made landfall either. Um, it still maintained its shape for some time um, and it, yeah as I say it was approaching the east coast by the time it eventually um, was gone completely but even then I think there was still some trace of it and here you can see the final images as it moved off towards the east causing some rainfall over the east coast there New Jersey New York Delmarva Peninsula and then moved off out to sea so the radar imagery this is when it was making landfall and progressing north it moved quite quickly actually um, and also caused a lot of rainfall over in Oklahoma too and beyond The next storm, one to forget really, Tropical Storm Claudette peaked with winds of 50 miles an hour and a pressure of 1,003 millibars. Didn't really do anything whilst it was tropical, though its extra tropical remnants uh, did produce some slight disruption in Newfoundland. The first storm in the East Pacific was Category 4 Hurricane Andres, which formed at the end of May and developed into that strong Category 4 storm. A pretty storm to watch actually because it didn't cause any damage or fatalities and stayed well away from land. Uh, here's an image of the storm as well. I think this was a little bit before its peak. You can see the eye there and its location in relation to the coast of Mexico far, far away. No such luck with the second storm however, Blanca, which reached Category 4 intensity on two separate occasions in the beginning of June and then tracked towards the northwest making landfall in Mexico as a tropical storm. It caused $67,000 of damages but no fatalities luckily. The next storm was Hurricane Carlos, which was a menacingly close distance from the coast of Mexico for some time as a tropical storm or hurricane, finally making landfall as a tropical storm. Its peak wind speed was 90 miles an hour, a very interesting storm too, uh, as you'll see on this satellite imagery here, because um, it developed first of all to be, reach its first peak um, and then it sort of shrunk and then it had one of the tiniest eyes in the world or something like that or at least the tiniest eye wall is a satellite imagery like and then we had tropical storm Ayla in July 2015 we had winds of 40 miles an hour and a pressure of 1003 millibars not much else to say about this one but there is a lot to say about the Central Pacific's first birth, Typhoon Halola, which not only became a tropical storm, but went on to become a Category 2 typhoon on two occasions in the Western Pacific, eventually making landfall in Japan as a tropical storm. It caused $1.2 million of damages, though luckily it was not a fatal storm. Now for some Indian Ocean storms, here's the first one, Tropical Storm 5, which did very little, just stayed out the sea, as a 40 mile an hour storm didn't really do anything. More from the Indian Ocean in the next few days. We cover storms that formed since November 2014 on this feature, and here's the first one in the West Pack, Tropical Storm Sin Laku, which passed over the Philippines as a tropical depression at the end of November, and eventually made landfall in Vietnam. 65 miles an hour was the winds, pressure 990, and it did cause 4.3 million dollars damages and four fatalities. 
And then in early December, most of the Philippines was on the edge of their seats looking at Super Typhoon Hagapit, worrying about a repeat of Haiyan. Luckily that didn't happen, but it was still a Category 3 landfall on the island of Samar, and it caused a lot of damage, $114 million of that, and over 100 fatalities in the end. It was a very strong storm, winds of 180 miles an hour, pressure of 905 millibars passed very close to Manila as a tropical storm, and then dissipated near Vietnam on December the 12th. And then we had one of those typical late season storms for the Philippines as well, Tropical Storm Jiangmi, which passed through as a tropical storm with winds of 50 miles an hour, but as is uh, quite often the case with weak storms further south in the Philippines, particularly near the end of the year, we tend to see a lot of fatalities, and we did here 66 in all, with damage totals of $28.3 million. Then in early January, Typhoon Mekala initially had people worrying about another major hurricane landfall. That didn't materialize, though it still became a Category 1 typhoon before landfall, with winds of 80 miles an hour and a pressure of 975 millibars. Weakening substantially upon its first landfall, damages weren't as bad as what was first thought, though three people still lost their lives. The next storm, Typhoon Higos, formed in February and was a surprise to most people in how strong it became. A Category 3 with winds of 120 miles an hour formed quickly, dissipated quickly, and it was gone by February the 11th. 